All right, so boom, y'all. This is gonna be this is gonna be a bit of a rant video if I'm being honest, because I started to realize just how many ridiculous things rappers do that really get on my nerves. So here we are, five things rappers do that I can't stand. These are just things that I shake my head every time it happens, and I wish all rappers would stop doing it. If you are an up and coming rapper, I'm kindly asking you not to do any of these things because it will cause people not to take you seriously. But speaking of up and coming artists, I wanna shout out the artist Huey Revolution. His song Happy is a song I'm sure a lot of you will enjoy. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. You can stay for the night. You say I want your type. Ain't no type like this. Yeah. If you enjoyed the track, then check out his Instagram and SoundCloud at Huey Revolution. Now, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell for new videos. Now, let's get started. See, I got money. I got paper. I hustle hard in the milkshake table. Now, for those of you that don't know, slant rhyming is something that happens in pretty much every rap song in existence. It's when a rapper slurs the pronunciation of a word in order for it to rhyme with another word. Now, doing that in itself is not the problem because, like I said, all rappers do it. But what I'm referring to are the times where rappers just completely say a word wrong, just so it can fit in a rhyme. I mean, oh my gosh, some rappers be out here reaching, like reaching hard to make something rhyme. And it's just so cringy to hear every time it happens. So I have a few examples to show you guys what I mean. One of them is from T.I.'s song, Ain't Gonna Bother Me, where T.I. pronounces the word champion as champion, so it can rhyme with the word ring. So do you guys see what I mean by trying too hard? I have two other examples that are so much worse, but stuff like this is what I mean. He pronounced champion as champion. Like, it, it doesn't work. It just sticks out as stupid. The next example is Lil Wayne on his song Abortion, where he pronounces the word unemployed as unemployed. You can save your bullshit on your memory card. If this real nigga business, then you niggas unemployed. I don't care what anyone says. This line was whack because he tried so hard to rhyme. A memory card, unemployed, like... Ugh. As soon as I heard this, I was like, wait, what did this nigga just say? There are times where Weezy has done this and it worked just fine, such as his song BMJR, where he said, I'm the man in my land, I call it Lil Louisiana. Don't get me wrong, that line was terrible, but it was terrible because it was a lame pun, not because of the slant rhyming. Louisiana and Louisiana do sound the same, but unemployed and unemployed, like hell no. This next one is easily the worst case of slant rhyming I have ever heard, and it's from Jewel Santana on the We Fly High remix. So Jewel started his verse with a simple four bar setup, like the first three lines were pretty simple, nothing special, generic rap bars, but the fourth line completely ruined the entire setup. He said, money ain't a thing, that's why I spend it. Your car is like your homes, everything is rented. I'll buy your building, you'll be my tenant. My money come fast, just like a leopard. This nigga pronounced the word leopard as limperant. This is what I be talking about when I say niggas be reaching. A limperant, my nigga? There are many other examples I can give you guys, but this is just what I meant by trying too hard to rhyme. If you have to pronounce unemployed as unemployed, or leper as leprit. They just changed the word entirely, please. See, I got money, I got paper. I hustle hard in the milkshake tables. So for this one, I can't stand when a rapper says a bar and then explains it as if the listener didn't understand it the first time. You guys ever notice how a rapper will say a line and then pause and wait for you to get it? Or they will run the line back and be like, y'all didn't even catch that. And then they explain it again. You ain't even catch that. I've heard so many lines like that. When it happens now, it frustrates me because it's like, like nigga, yes, I, I got it the first time you said it. You can continue rapping. Go ahead. Take Big Sean on the song Talk Show, for example. It's a collab song he made with Janae Aiko in which they play a fictional celebrity couple on a talk show. This dude said, you got these people inside our business like you and I is. After saying the line, he says, you probably didn't even catch that, did you? This is a perfect example of what I mean because the line is not that deep. He's saying how the letters U and I are inside the word business, and that's it. So him adding, you probably didn't even catch that, made the line so much worse. Cause it's like, nah, nah nigga, we, we, we got it, like, we, we caught it. Like, what is there not to get? In the context of the song, he was directing it to his girlfriend and saying that she's so used to causing drama and nagging to other people that she doesn't realize she's telling too many other people their business. But Big Sean could have easily just said that without this lame ass simile. Another easy example is Nicki Minaj on the song Only. On this line, the line was already garbage, but Nicki actually explained what the line meant and she says it so direct that it ruins it even further. The line was, I don't duck nobody but tape. Yeah, that was a setup for a punchline on duct tape. 
I've seen so many people say the line was good, but she ruined it with the explanation. And that's where I disagree. The line was never good. I don't duck nobody but tape, but that's ass on his own. The only rapper I know that consistently does this and it works is Conceited with his slow it down, I just dissed you. I don't even go to black church with a pastor ratchet, the deacon be singing, let us pray. Bow your heads and we amen. Slow it down, I just dissed you. I said pastor ratchet, the deacon be singing, let us pray. Well, bow your heads when we amen. I know he's a battle rapper, but still, when he does it, it works because he has like triple, quadruple entendres. But when most other rappers do it, it's just uncalled for. You guys ever notice how rappers only say that a person's opinion matters when they're complimented the rapper's music? But if someone is complaining about their music, they disregard it and say their opinion doesn't matter? So what I mean is, if you tell an artist directly that you don't rock with one of their songs or albums or whatever, they'll be quick to say, oh, you not a rapper though, like you don't know about the grind, you don't know how it feels to be in the studio for hours on end, writing down bars, flowing on the mic, you don't do this for a living, so you don't get it. Your opinion doesn't matter to me. Now, when rappers say stuff like this, it sounds like they're proving a point because they're saying, you know, like you're not in their shoes, like you don't know the struggles they go through to make their music. But this comeback is so fallacious, and here's why. These rappers only say this shit when people are complaining about their music. If you tell an artist that you love their music, they might not even say anything but a quick, oh, thanks, I love you, I appreciate it, and that's it. But if you tell them you don't like it or you think it's trash, they go on an entire rant talking about how your opinion doesn't matter because you're not a rapper. So this response is very one-sided. If someone tells you that they love your music, then their opinion matters. But if they tell you they don't like it, their opinion suddenly doesn't matter because they don't make music. I think the rappers who are saying this are forgetting one major thing. Y'all do realize that 90% of the people who are going to hear your music aren't rappers, right? You make music because you want to share it with the world and you want other people to check it out and give their opinion on it. So if somebody gives you a negative opinion and all you have to say is, oh, you're not a rapper, so your opinion don't matter, then this clearly shows that you're just not able to accept criticism. Like, do you expect your music to only be heard by other rappers or something? If so, why are you putting it out for everybody else to hear? Just show it to some of your other, like, rapper friends. Don't show it to everybody if you're just going to complain when someone tells you they don't like it. But that's my bottom line with this point. Rappers really need to stop saying this as a comeback because it's so stupid. And truthfully, it's not just rappers. There's other people that think that in general. Hey, if you don't make music, then your opinion on music doesn't mean anything. But like I said, people only say that when you're given a negative opinion. If you're given a positive one, it doesn't matter if you make music or not. They'll accept it. So better known as filler, some people's criteria for filler is a song that's just okay. The song isn't trash, but it's not a highlight either. Like if you took the song off the project, it would be fine. While that is one criteria for filler, another criteria that I have is a song that just doesn't fit the connection to the overall album. Now, if we're being honest, there are a ton of albums that have no overall concept and are really just a compilation of songs. Like, look at Lil Wayne's The Carter series. Not a single one of these five albums have one overall theme that runs throughout the album. There's a couple of songs from each one that may share a meaning, but in terms of overall concept, none of these albums have one. But I'm focusing more on albums that do have a concept and then there's just songs on the album that doesn't match that concept at all. Let's look at Eminem's Kamikaze album, for example. So the album was viewed as an attack on the current rap scene, talking about how up and coming rappers are lazy, they use ghostwriters, and they don't care about the culture. It also included other things such as Eminem dissing other rappers, such as Machine Gun Kelly on the song Not Alike, and also about Eminem defending Revival and saying how most people who are trashing the album just didn't listen to it entirely. With that being said, Normal, Nice Guy, Good Guy, and Venom are all songs that don't belong on this album. The first three are typical relationship songs that M always makes, and Venom was just a promotional song for the movie of the same name. All of these songs are unnecessary as hell, and they make the album look so directionless. And I love Good Guy. It's my favorite song on the album, but at the same time, it's one of the worst from the album simply because it doesn't fit with anything. And now that I think about it, I gotta add Stepping Stone in this group too. It's my second favorite song behind Good Guy, but the song is just Eminem apologizing to D12 and saying how him blowing up from his solo success made it seem like he didn't care about the group anymore. And how ever since Proof died, the group just never been the same. It's a beautiful meaning to a song, but why is it on this album? Seriously. Eminem did the same thing with Revival, and he personally said he included songs like Need Me and Tragic Endings to give listeners a break from the rest of the album so they wouldn't be hearing songs about the same topic over and over. But I don't rock with that excuse. If you have songs on your album that you know don't match the overall concept, then just take them off, period. 
See, J. Cole was smart because he did that with his For Your Eyes Only album. Songs that came out before the album, such as Everybody Dies and False Prophets, he originally was going to put them on the album, but then he changed his mind and said that they didn't fit the message he was going for, so he just removed them. But a lot of rappers wouldn't do that. Even if they know a song doesn't match the overall message, they'll just put it on there anyway. And I feel like that's ridiculous. See, I got money, I got paper, I hustle hard in the this last one's gonna be a bit of a shorter rant, but why is it some rappers don't take their time when releasing music? People be releasing 100 albums a year and then get surprised when people say the quality of their music is declining. If you took your time to actually craft something special, then that should be reflected in your music. Now, what's considered taking too long or releasing something too soon will depend on who you ask. Some people say six months is enough time. Some people say six months is way too soon. Hell, some people think releasing a project every year is too soon and you should wait a couple of years. But I think it's universally agreed that whatever you put out better be worth the wait. Don't just be in the studio all the time thinking every single thing you create, people are gonna wanna hear that shit. Like, learn how to tell yourself no. I personally think a rapper's clout level has to be high enough for them to go a long time without giving people music. If you're an Earl Sweatshirt or a Chance the Rapper, you could take a couple of years off before giving a new project and people wouldn't be mad because they already have a lot of people's respect. But if you just got into this rapping thing, don't think you can just not drop any music for a long ass time and expect people to care about you when you get back. Because there's a high chance people already started calling you irrelevant and moved on. This goes for new rappers and rappers who have been in the game for some years now. You don't have to release a project every single year because like I said, the quality of your music will drop and people will notice it. Take your time constructing a project, then put it out wait to get some feedback on it and whether people enjoyed it or not just take your time on your next project and don't feel like you have to quickly put out something else